Hi everyone, it's Alyssa and welcome to You Can Learn Math. Today we're talking about converting parabolas equations into vertex form. How to change from standard form to vertex form of a parabola. So first things first, what is standard form? Standard form is when it looks something like this. where our A, B, and C are just constants, AKA numbers, they're just numbers. Vertex form is this. A times A X minus H squared plus K. Okay, like, oh, goody, more letters. Vertex form is called vertex form because it tells you where the vertex is. Shocking, I know, right? Like, I bet you never would have guessed that. Okay, so here I think is the best way to show you how H and K work when you're talking about moving the vertex of something. And this happens for a lot of different functions. A lot. You're gonna see this over and over and over again. Okay, so here's y equals x squared. Now let's say if I set this up like it's a little h and k thing, but I'm just gonna put zero and I'm gonna put a one out here in front. Okay, so there's my little h and k vertex form, but I haven't changed anything yet. It's multiplying by one, I'm not adding anything inside, actually, sorry, minus, excuse me, not plus, minus zero, plus zero. Okay. Here's sort of your standard rule that you're going to see over and over and over again. If you add or subtract something inside the parentheses over here, add or subtract something inside the parentheses with the X and little squared or cubed or whatever's on the outside, it's going to move it left or right. It's going to change the X, but it's going to change it in the opposite way of what you'd think. For example, if I subtract two, it moves positive two to the right. If I add three, it moves negative three to the left. Inside the parentheses, backwards is frontwards and frontwards is backwards. It's opposite world. Ah. Outside the parentheses, things are a little more straightforward. This one changes the Y and it changes it directly. So if I say plus two, it goes up two. If I say minus three, it goes down three. So if I'm looking at this vertex form right here and I didn't have my little handy dandy graph, then I would say, oh, plus three. Well, it's moved to the X the opposite. So it's negative three. But the outside, hey, that moves the Y just as it is. So that's also a negative three. So I know my vertex is negative three, negative three. If I wanted this to move so that the vertex was positive two, positive four, then inside the parentheses needs to be negative two. But outside does need to be a positive four. Ah, so now my vertex is two, four. Again, inside the parentheses, it moves the opposite of what you'd expect, left to right, and outside it moves it just as you'd expect, up and down. So let's start with some examples. Let's just jump right in. Here is one, y equals, let's say x squared, plus six X plus two. Okay, X squared plus six X plus two. And we want to convert it so that it looks like this, this vertex form. And you're like, how on earth do I do that? How do I change this to look like this? Okay, we're gonna go step by step here. First thing. We're going to look at just this first part. And I'm going to put a little space here, more than a little, frankly, <laughs> a big space here, 
we're not going to be concerned with the two for the moment. We're just going to like, it's over there. We're not forgetting it's there, but we're just going to focus on the x squared plus six, six x, excuse me. And we're going to complete the square. Ah, if you just got that little rumble in your stomach going, oh, I thought I wouldn't have to do that anymore. Mm, sorry, it's back again. Here is a quick sort of run through if you haven't used this, used this in a while. Completing the square is when you have something, it's, it's referring to this setup or this pattern. Or if I have a plus b and I square it, and I use foil and I distribute everything, what comes out is a squared plus 2 times a times b plus b squared. This is just a pattern that happens every single time. For example, if it was x plus 2, eh, let's say 4 squared, I'm going to get, what's my a? My a is x. So my first term is going to be a, the a term squared. The second one is going to be 2 times the a term times the b term, 2 times x times 4, or 8x. And the last one is going to be the b term squared, 4 squared is 16. So that's the pattern when we're talking about squaring things. So completing the square is going backwards. It's starting with this and going backwards to that, trying to figure it out. All right, well, let's think about this logically. If I had, let's say, x squared plus 8x plus what? I would go, hmm, I'm trying to get back to something plus something or something minus something squared. Hmm, what could it be? Well, let's see. I know that this first term is going to be this bit squared, x squared. Okay, so x right there. And I know this middle term is 2 times my a, which is x, times my b. 2 times x times what equals 8x? 4. There we go. Okay, well if 4 is my b, then this last space needs to be 4 squared, 16. Okay, and this, this little process, this little puzzle solving, that's what's going on. So now you've seen what's going on, I'm going to tell you the formula for how to do this, the shortcut for how to do this. So here is your shortcut. If you have something like this and you say complete the square, the shortcut to find this number is you take this number, you divide it by 2, then you square it. And that gives you that number. So 8 divided by 2 is 4. 4 squared is 16. Okay? All right, so that's what we're going to use in this situation right here. x squared plus 6x plus what? Remember, I'm not really worried about the 2. I'm just kind of putting it off to the side. I'm not thinking about it. I'm going to look at this middle number here next to the x. I'm going to divide it by 2, then square it. 6 divided by 2 is 3. Remember this 3 for a moment later. 3 squared is 9, so I'm going to write plus 9. Now, can I just go around adding 9s to equations just because I want to? Well, yes and no. <laughs> I can, but I always have to offset it. So if I add 9 to it, I also have to subtract 9 because plus 9 minus 9, that's 0, so I haven't actually changed anything. So every time I fill this in, I need to do the opposite over here. So plus 9, then I'm going to subtract 9. Okay. So now remember, I said, remember that this was 3, that I divided by 2, that was 3. 
So this right here is x plus 3 squared. And over here, plus 2 minus 9 is minus 7. And there it is in vertex form. Okay, what do we do? You know, like, ah, I wasn't planning for that. All of my ones have been x squared plus something. There hasn't been a coefficient. Any time there is a coefficient in front of this x, there's a very sort of simple but crucial step you need to take. Remember my 50 is kind of hanging out on the side. What you're going to do is you're going to look at these two. You're going to pull this number out. I don't care if this number is not divisible by it. Like if it was 2x squared plus 5x, I don't care. You have to take that number out. Same if it's a negative. If it's a negative x squared, pull out a negative 1 out of everything. Okay, you can't have anything in front of the x squared. It just has to be x squared. So we're going to pull a 2 out of that. I'm going to divide both of those by 2 and I get x squared plus 18x. And then that plus 50 on the outside. All right, now this one, there is a, a crucial critical step and this is kind of, it's gonna be a little, huh? But just bear with me. All right, so first thing, we're gonna try to complete our square. We're gonna use our same process we did before. 18 divided by two is nine. 9 squared is 81. So 81 goes here. And I'm going to subtract 81 out here, right? <gasps> no! And this is where a lot of students get tripped up. Understandably so. Because I didn't just add 81. There's this 2 sitting out here. I added 2 times 81. Or 162. So I have to do minus 162. Yeah, I know. Same as if there was a negative 1 out here. I wouldn't be adding 81. I'd be, you know, adding a negative 81. So you have to take that into consideration. Pulling out this 2, it's still influencing everything inside this parentheses. You have to be super careful, careful with that and not forget about the 2. So I've added 162, so I need to subtract 162. And again, this was 9. We said we divided by 2. We got 9. So 9 is my B. So this is going to be 2. Come on. 2 times X plus 9 squared minus 112. And that's 50 minus 162 is 100, negative 112. Okay. And so our vertex for this one would be negative 9 negative 112. Okay, if you have any questions on that, please share them in the comments below. If you have any similar topics or totally different topics, it's up to you. You are in control of what you comment, as always. Please leave them in the comments below. Hi everyone, it's Alyssa and welcome to You Can Learn Math. I hope you enjoyed that today. Um, if it was helpful, useful in any way, please like, share, subscribe. You know the drill. Thank you so much for stopping by. Hope you have a great day. See you later. Bye.